Ralph's decision. Ralph, Ralph's decision. Chapter 3. After his strenuous night of riding through puddles, fending off his relatives, trying to repair his motorcycle, and rebuilding his nest, Ralph napped soundly. He was awakened by the angry voice of Mr. Minch, the hotel manager, speaking to Miss Bramble, Ryan's mother. Look at that floor, Mr. Minch was saying. Disgraceful. It certainly needs a good cleaning, agreed Miss Bramble. Where's Matt? demanded Mr. Minch, keeping this lobby clean as his responsibility. Worried because his friend was in trouble, Rath peeked out from under the clock and saw Matt, unaware of the manager's displeasure, enter the lobby. Morning, morning, Mr. Mrs. Bramble, Mr. Minch, Matt said. I'm pre it's sure pretty outside with the sun shining on the snow and the sky so blue. Mr. Mitch ignored that green. Matt, he said, and his voice was stern. Take a good look at this floor. Dried mud on the linoleum. Mouse droppings all over the place. It's a disgrace. And the whole lobby smells, well, mousy. That's funny, thought Ralph. I can't smell a thing. Matt looked at the floor. Well, I'll be, I'll be jiggered, he said. How do you suppose that happened? It looked clean enough last night. Liar, thought Ralph with affection. He knew Matt would never say a bad word against mice. Never mind how it happened, said Mr. Minch. Exactly what do you plan to do about it? Nay, now take it easy, Mr. Minch, said Matt. I'll have this place cleaned up in no time. See that you do, said Mr. Minch. This is not, this may not be a first class hotel, but there's no excuse for a derby lobby. I realize that late afternoon off rivals often have muddy floors, but mouse droppings, if I continue to find signs of mice, I shall have to let you go. That's not fair, thought Ralph, who did not want to lose his loyal friend. Matt had been part of the hotel as long as he can remember, much longer than either Mr. Minch or Ryan's mother. Most employees did not stay long at the Mountain View Inn. Yes, sir, the cheer had gone out of Matt's voice. Ralph, who came from a long line of intelligent mice, knew that most of his relatives had learned to avoid traps and poisons. He was not sure about his littlest relatives, however. What was left after traps and poisons? Cats. Ralph shuddered at the thought of bloodthirsty cats stalking his innocent little brothers, sisters, and cousins. The littlest ones who always become entangled in the carpet fringe would be the first to go. A skier who was looking at the headlines of the newspaper on the racket near the door overheard the conversation between Matt and him, Mr. Minch. There's a new electronic mouser on the market, he volunteered. It makes a noisy loud old mice can hear and drives them out of the building in a hurry. I'll look into it. Something has to be done around here, said Mr. Minch as he returned to his office. Ralph shuddered at the thought of an electronic mouser sending his family screaming into the snow to freeze to death. Mrs. Bramble wanted to say something pleasant to Matt after the unhappy incident. One thing about the ski crowd, she remarked, they may track, they may track in snow, but they don't bother to drip, a dry, um, drip dry a lot of clothes and clutter at the bathrooms. With that cheerful remark, she went upstairs to count sheets and towels in the linen room. More like a fourth-rate hotel, if you ask me," muttered Matt, who had been better, who had seen better days. He dragged out the vacuum cleaner. Old Mr. Old Mitch will never spend a nickel on an electronic mouser. How am I supposed to get rid of the mice? Said, "Say, please, mousies, go so go away, so old Mr. High and Mighty won't throw me out in the cold." As the vacuum cleaner roared back and forth across the carpet, Matt looked so worried that Ralph began to worry too. What if the old man did really did lose his job in the middle of winter? Where would he go, and what would Ralph do without his friend? He knows that in spite of his worries, Matt did not run the vacuum cleaner near the hems of the curtains, a favorite hiding place of mice. Ralph sat back on his haunches and began his morning grooming. As he wiped his paws over his whiskers, he suddenly had a most unhappy thought. He was to blame for Matt's trouble. If he had been an ordinary mouse without a motorcycle, all his little relatives would not have come flocking into the lobby. They would have still lived upstairs, snugging in his nest behind the baseboards, growing fat on crumbs from all the food skiers, muddled into the rooms to avoid the dining room piece price, uh, prices. 
Ralph paused in his wish washing to think. If he moved back upstairs, his relatives would follow. But what about his motorcycle? He couldn't leap he couldn't leap up a flight of stairs with it. Neither could he leave leave it behind. Never. If he left it behind, some of his older cousins would grab it and stay in the lobby, at least until they wore it out or wrecked it, and the younger relatives would stay too. What was Ralph to do? He was still turning over his problem in his head when the clock above him ground and ground and groaned and managed to bring out eight bongs. Right on schedule, Ryan came running to the lobby, well warmly dressed, to go to the mysterious place known as school. He was carrying his books and his backpack, lunch in his backpack. Ralph admired his waffle stompers. The muddy floor caught Ryan's attention. He studied the mud, and then, and when Matt left to fetch a mop, he got down on the floor in front of the clock and pressed his cheek against the floor so he could speak to Ralph. I saw your tire tracks, he whispered. I bet you had a great time last night. Yeah, except for a bunch of little mice, said Ralph. What's the matter? Ryan asked him. You sound unhappy. Suddenly, Ralph knew what he had to do. He thought fast, which was, an e which was easy for him. Mice have to off often have to think fast to survive. Look, Ryan, he said, I'm in trouble and I don't have time to tell you about it. Just take me and my motorcycle with you and don't ask questions. To school, Ryan was surprised. Come on, begged Ryan. We're friends, aren't we? Sure, we're friends, agreed Ryan. But there's no time for but, said Ralph, who knew Ryan would soon have to leave the catch the school bus. Well, okay, if you say so, said Ryan. By that time, by the time, okay, Ryan, he had past Ryan's lips, Ralph was wheeling out of his motorcycle and his crash helmet dangled from the head handlebars. I'll stay out of sight. He assured his friends, there must be someone I can live, somewhere I can live at school. Ryan stuffed the motorcycle into one pocket of his parka and picked Ralph up so carefully so he wouldn't splash his tiny ribs. You mean you want to stay at school? Yes, said Ralph, suddenly frightened by his decision. There must be some place I can hide. Ryan thought a moment. Well, there's some there's one of Miss Hopper's boots. You can hide there. Doesn't she wear the boots? said Ralph, picturing himself squishing in the toe of a boot by the foot of Melissa, whoever she was. Not if she can help it, said Ryan. Melissa hates boots, so she leaves them in the school. That way her mother can't make her wear them. A sensible girl, thought Ralph. Mrs. Bramble came bustling back into the lobby. Ryan, what on earth are you doing on your knees? You should be on your way out to the highway, or you'll miss the bus. Just checking the floor for dust, fibbed Ryan as he quickly slid Ryan into his parka coat. Bye, Mom. And he ran out the door, and when crunching thought the snow of the highway, Ralph must have second the thoughts about Ralph to school. He said, I guess Miss Kay won't mind. Who's Miss Kay? asked Ralph. My teacher, explained Ryan. Her real name is Miss Kutchenbaker. But she told us to call her Miss Kay because calling her Miss Kutchenbaker Backer, would take up too much class time. Oh, said Ralph, mystified. To Ralph, school was a strange and mysterious place. When he had been a very young mouse, Ralph had pictured school as something like a bus because mothers and fathers who arrived at the hotel with several children after a long, hot drive across the Sacramento Valley or the long, winding ride over the Sierra Nevada often said, I'll be glad when school starts. Ralph had naturally concluded that because the school started, it also must move like a car.